Oh, I'm out of breath. Beatbox, cardi, beatbox, cardio, beatbox, cardio, beatbox, cardio, with the boogie boy. Bass. Beatbox. With the cut. Beatbox cardio. With the bogey boy. Beatbox cardio. With the bow. 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 Bogey boy. Bow. 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 Bogey boy now. Watch out now. Easy. What up? On the ones and twos. What up? What up? What up? What up? DJ Dr. Hoy. Bo, 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 DJ bo, Dr. Bo, Hizzle on the Hizzle. What up, everybody? What up? Welcome back to an episode. Fam, you can see us. Hey. Whoa, whoa. You can see us. We can. We, see we you. can't see you guys. Oh, I can. Well, I can. I can, read I can imagine. I can we, see them. We see you, Kyle Copeland. Yeah. Yep. Kyle. What up, Kyle? <laughs> what up, Kyle? And fans. And people of this nature. Yeah. I so. just had to give a shout out to Kyle Copeland, man. Yeah, he always dedicated listener, from, listener since day one. We love you, Kyle. Yeah. All the old faithfuls out there. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Welcome to episode 72 of the Music City Disc Golf Podcast, now on YouTube. Whoa. Welcome. Whoa. Yep. You're here. First ever video. Yeah. Not everybody. Some people are still listening in their car. So to those <laughs> yep, people, sorry, what up guys. to Oh, I'm watching in my car. What up to your eardrum? Yep. How yeah. you doing? Yep. It is Monday, February 24th, and we are coming to you from the lab with all our new gear, how do we sound? We sound better. I think we sound we way sound great. better. Crisp, crisp, like the old Granny crisp. Smith. Crisp, crisp. Granny Smith Mike. in the day, boys. That'd be Sounds good right good, now, man. Crispy. Not yeah. as good as a cosmic crisp. No, a no, cosmic. no, no, nowhere near as good as a cosmic crisp. Wait, 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 before we get into this, you need boys need to explain to me what a cosmic crisp is. It is a hybrid apple that took twenty years to make in Washington State. And it's a hybrid of a Enterprise apple and a Honeycrisp. This man, Dr. Hoy, trivia we've, partner we've for life. This. Science. We've discussed this previously. Have we? Yeah, it's a stellar apple, apparently. Oh. Apparently it's just get on out that. of this world. Punnett Square. Cosmic, almost, if you would. Oh, that's all we the did lentical, there with your words. The, it's called that because you of big the boy lenticles. Words. Lenticles class. L-E-N-T-I-C-L-E-S. Lenticulars. Learn about your lenticulars in school, kids. And we're way off the reservation from jump. Yep, for sure. Somebody took it there, and his name starts with Doctor. Doctor Hoy. <laughs> Doctor Details. Yeah, so for those of you that uh, don't haven't listened before, if this is your first time joining us, uh, th- I'm Will McCaskill. This is Doctor Hoy. I'm listening. Zachary Hoy, and this is Jay Skinner. What up? And we are the Music City Disc Golf Podcast. So what we like to do boom, boom. is start off the show talking about some local stuff, break down the weekly events that are going on with their ace pots, and then talk about some upcoming stuff. And then we always have a cool guest. Uh, we actually had to record the segments out of order tonight, so we just what? got done talking to Chris Clemens. Uh, due to his schedule, we jumped on with him as soon as we got together. Crazy. Um, yeah, really awesome conversation. I'm just going to put this out there right now for the audience that uh, – as we are learning and incorporating the video stuff, I made a small error <laughs> while recording the video with Chris, but I think I'm going to be able to save it because I have the I can export the audio into an MP3 and then put that in with the video. It'll be good. Optimism, guys. Yep. I like yeah. it. I apologize also for the video on with, with Chris was kind of jumpy and the audio lagged behind a little bit in, in a few spots. So little bit of a bad connection from Chris, but uh, I think you guys will have no trouble following along with the conversation, uh, particularly those of you that are listening in the audio version. So how's my video? Is it is it jumpy? No, oh, sorry. In case you didn't notice, these two hooligans over here. Hey, excited. J Cam. They're on film. I always, I always knew I'd be on TV. First cops, now this. Right. <laughs> Um, so yeah, well we're we're, 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 we're we're get right into the week weekly breakdown. Break it, baby. Break it, break it, break it, break it. Breaking it down. Bum. It's about to be broken. It. Welcome it. to the weekly breakdown. Oh, we didn't do the gong. It's a bummer. We don't have a gong yet. Yeah, we need to get one. We have we have one. Hey, there's a pin. <laughs> you can try it. Let's see. Almost. 
on the bottom. No, not quite. Dude. No, it's almost like a cowbell. It almost had the effect, sort of. <laughs> More but not cowbell. Really. <laughs> Into the weekly breakdown. Starting on Saturday, we go sh- 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 every day we shuffle and shuffle and every Saturday we shuffle in with Zach Evans, the Music City Shuffle. Right now, running the Sanction Saturday Shuffle or the Saturday Sanction, Sanction Shuffle. I like Saturday the Sanction Shuffle. Saturday Shuffle. Sanction Saturday Shuffle. And this is our running right now as a PDJ Sanction League. So PDJ L tier events, they're jumping from course to course. Uh, pro entry is fifteen dollars. Am entry is ten. Right now, the ace pot is at $42, so get you some money, and they are going to be at Naval Hill on the 29th. This is Sean Connery. Sorry. Uh, weird. <laughs> <laughs> My last show looking lovely this evening. <laughs> that's, what I thought, that's what I was laughing at. <laughs> Sorry. That was fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, so check out the Saturday Shuffle with Zach Evans as our boy. And also on Saturday, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we've got... Random draw doubles at Seven Oaks with Dr. John Williams. And that is a 1.30 sign up, 2 o'clock T. And the ace pot is at a cool $140. Boom. Get you some money. Get you some money. Well, Get on some of these ace pots. Yeah, dude. Go on a little it's tour. It's tax season. Oh, I got more money. And I got these ace pots are tax free. Uh, I'm, I'm throwing these ace well, pots yeah. out as Air long as you keep style. your mouth shut. First one's <laughs> taken off, the next one's landing. We got Sunday. Sunday singles with Q-Tip at Seven Oaks. Nine o'clock sign up, nine thirty T. Tags are on the line, and the ace pot for this event, combined with Seven Oaks Tuesday night doubles, is at two hundred dollars. Get you some. some money, money, money. And also on Sunday, two o'clock in the afternoon, Cane Ridge with Robert Zavala, Big Z, Big Z, twelve dollar all in random draw doubles, and the ace pot is at another two hundred dollars. So that's four hundred dollars on Sunday. It's climbing. And they always have an interesting layout. Yeah. It's always like big, I think they're big. sticking to Big Cane right now. Big Cane? Oh, okay. Yeah, in preparation for the bag tag. The old Makes Big sense. Daddy Cane. Well, they might jump back. I know he had just recently said that they were going to be at Big Cane for a while. Boom. I think the last week or two, they, that's what they've done. Well, they're doing also. He's, he said he was doing some work over there, too. So yeah. if you guys want to lend a hand. There is a work party there on Saturday. Yes. This coming Saturday, um, check Facebook for the details. I'm not sure what time that's beginning, but this Saturday, the 29th, uh, they're doing some work out at Cane Ridge. So help out. Give back. Do that. That's what the, that's what professionals do. This is and the volunteer like state. Amateurs, you can you can help too. We, amateurs help too. This that's is the volunteer state. Also, that's what they also do. <sighs> and then going into Monday... <laughs> Um, Squam Church Ferry high. Doubles at Sanders Ferry Park. That is on hiatus until daylight savings. So after March 8th, it will come back. So that would be actually Put it in the March, calendar. 10th. March 9th. Monday, March 10th. Because our bag tag is on the 9th, right? No, it's no. on the 8th. Yeah, so our bag tag is Sunday the 8th. Okay, so, so yeah, Monday, March 9th. Squam Church Ferry March Doubles will be back. 9th. I left my water bottle over there. Um, mm. I think you might be able to help me out with that today. Uh, okay. Maybe. I mean, I could... Don't, don't do that. <laughs> how's the, how's the sound don't quality do that. on that bottle right there? Oh, uh, I thought it was like one of those old timey radio shows. <laughs> oh, the metal one, but sure. Metal, metal work too. Oh, metal one? Yeah. Thank you. Thank the you. other no, metal the one. Black, metal the black water metal bottle. water bottle. Right That's... There. Thank you. Third time for Quality podcasting. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> Whatever. I am parched. Appreciate you, buddy. Oh, you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Remember, I owe you one. I promise. Mm-hmm. You owe me a lot. So, um, I guess we're gonna have. I think I just got a message from Marcus saying there's some frat brothers next door about to get loud. Where, where did he go? We're about to get loud. I'm not sure where he's at. Marcus, our studio supervisor, has left the building. <laughs> yeah, our engineer. We're off the rails. We are in trouble, guys. Hashtag yep. parenting. That is not home. This is not gonna. This is not gonna bode well for us. Bode. Bode. Um, Bode. So, yes, on Monday, March 9th, look forward to a $400 ace pot at Squanter's Ferry. Ching, March 9th. Ching, and get you some money. Yes. Tuesday night, we got random draw doubles with Dave Griffin at Seven Oaks. Five sign up, five thirty t and the ace pot is at $200. Get you some money. 200 And also coming back on Tuesday, March 10th, Triple Creek Doubles we should be back in action with Casey Newton. I haven't heard of a new updated confirmation on that, but I am of the understanding that it comes back after the time change. Yeah. Awesome. So hopefully look forward to an announcement post from Kaysen on that. 
Wednesday night. Uh, the Wednesday night tag extravaganza will be returning to Seven Oaks on Wednesday, March 11th. Yes. Yep. So the following March the time 11th. change, and we will have tags for. Are you sale. beginning to notice a theme here? Time change. Time change is coming up. We will have tags for sale and for pickup. And if for you pickup. Did not pick up your. Yep, and we're gonna do our best to uh, carry over the vouchers from E1 for everybody that had to leave before we were able to hand mm-hmm. them out. So, uh, as always, these are post-dated vouchers to the Nashville Disc Golf Store. Thank you to the Nashville Disc Golf Store. Mm-hmm. Um, so you guys can get those from us at E2 as well. So yes. most things will be available yes. on, at that at Wednesday nights. We usually bring stuff out for you guys to pick up there as well. So look forward to that. Uh, right now, going on though this Wednesday night, Cedar Hill Random Draw Double Doubles. <laughs> Random Draw Doubles with Dabbles. Billy Fowler. Five o'clock sign up, five thirty T. Ace pot is three hundred eighty three dollars. So get you some money. Yo. And then also on Wednesday night we've got random draw doubles uh, at Henry Horton State Park with Duck, Duck River Disc Golf. It's five thirty T. Ten dollar all in. Four bounties over three hundred dollars a piece. So get you some money. That was very well enunciated. Thank well. you. I was elaborating to make sure that I was speaking clearly. Nice. These mics I got in my brain. We're all fancy now. I got to be all professional. Everybody, everybody's watching me. Um, well, at least fake it. Yeah, that's Wednesday for you. Thir- you <laughs> Thursday night we've got White House random draw doubles with Lance Kirby at White House. Park. <coughs> five o'clock sign up. Five thirty. T. Ace pot is at tree fifty. So get you some more money. Another three hundred and fifty dollars right there. And also coming up this Thursday uh, at flying at sorry at Mayday Brewery Flying Colors Putting Challenge. But it's and this is going to be at five thirty this Thursday. But also it's going to be Ed Birdie's fiftieth uh, birthday. What? Yep. Happy early birthday, Ed Birdie! Yep, love so, that man. Happy birthday, Birdman! We love you. Let's get some golf snaps on the new mics for Ed. We love the Birdies. Uh, happy birthday, Ed! And you guys go Ed. out there and hang out with them. It's a fun time at Mayday. I mean, they're named after a good score on a disc golf hole. So. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good score in anybody's book. <coughs> yeah, I don't know if it's as good as an albatross slash ace, Bo Garrett Garthy, but good enough. Yeah, yeah. Also, impressive thing that happened this weekend. Mm. So we'll get into that in a little. Yeah, a little no, bit. we'll do it now. Coming in April, we will have a Friday night weekly as well. Um, but that is it for your weekly breakdown, folks. Broke it. Yep, uh, a couple, we got a whole bunch of stuff coming up oh, yeah. soon. Um, yeah, man. It's going to get super busy super fast. Yep. Starting this weekend, um, obviously we do have Tennessee State doubles coming up at Short Mountain with Flying Colors. That's this Saturday, and it's almost full, if not full already. I think the last time I looked, it was there, pretty was, close. there was maybe I'm 20 spots me. left when I looked last. Dr. Details. Hit me with the details. Hit him with those deets, Dr. Sir. Deedles. Please, please hold. We're trying to connect you to a representative right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You said that with an English accent. Thirty spots are available. Thirty spots. Thirty. Thirty. Okay. So disc golf scene. Get signed up. It's an awesome event. Short Mountain is sweet. Yes. It's gonna and be it, a little chilly Saturday, but no rain. In the forecast as of now. Yep. That's not looking like it's gonna happen. Definitely nothing like last year. At least going to DGC. Let's hope not. Goodness gracious, last to year. see the team hmm. names. There's, I'm looking at the team names. There's some funny ones on here. Yeah. Yep. Shout out to it puts the disc in the basket. Yeah. Or it gets to throw again. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with you and Ramey, man? <laughs> just... You guys got the like the most inappropriate and funny <coughs> names all the time. Uh, you know, we we take our time with it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yes that's this saturday also this saturday coming up um well friday zach evans is doing some work out at two rivers if you guys can help him holler at zach evans and he is doing some work at two rivers on friday saturday we are like we mentioned the, the work day going on at cane ridge um also on sunday we have the shamble coming up at nashboro the, the four-man shamble so go play that because that's cool. Jesse's awesome. Nashboro's awesome. So that's one that you don't want to miss. If you are not playing the shamble, we will be doing some work out at Mill Ridge on the NT course. 
just working on five and six, clearing fairways and some trails. Yeah. So yep. we'll we'll be out there again Sunday. Man, this. Sorry, course... I got to interrupt. The yeah. uh, oh. one of the team names is Finger Pop Killers. Oh, I wonder who that mm, is. That's who is that? Matt DeLung and Michael Hammock. I don't know, guys. Ooh, throwing some shade. I don't know about um, that one. Uh, yeah. Throwing some shade. Do they even play in the same division? The Do open men's golf, team. Bro. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> yeah. We wish you well. Um. Yeah, so Logan and Telly are playing. So I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, finger yeah, pops sure on there. Pop Logan and Telly. Shout out. I already see a gauntlet being thrown. That's Very pretty, creative. That's, cool. That's exciting on their part, too. But sorry to yeah, interrupt. Really, Working they at pretty, they reached pretty far on that. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah. So that's coming up this weekend, and also uh, coming up. What is the date for the Long Hollow Open, the Nashville Disc Golf Stores event that's coming up? Um, I saw that just March a minute 18th. ago. Actually, I'm calling it March 18th. That's that's my bet. March 18th. That would sound a no. Nope, that's about not right. right. That's a Wednesday. No? That's something else. No. Uh-huh. No, it is Sunday, March twenty second, twenty twenty second. We were somewhat close. Yep. We've also got um, the first test event at Mill Ridge Park coming up on Saturday, March fourteenth. Mm-hmm. So you're going to want to come out and be among the first people to play the new course. Be we'll, there. It will be the final event in Zach's Shuffle League, so there will be rated rounds going on there. We would encourage people to do that because. That will help us establish some data, ratings-wise, going into the national tour event. So that would be good for us to have. Establish some details. Details. Hmm. And refine hmm. those details. That was I was saving that one. Cute. Sorry. That was a good one. That was yeah. a nice placement. Thank you. Um, good phrasing. Quality podcasting. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we also will be having practice access for the pros if you guys are wanting to play uh, that course. We can give you practice access for $5 for the whole day. Um, so come check us out with that. We also have the fundraiser event for Tennessee School for the Blind coming up on Saturday, March 21st. Whew. And we're really excited for that. Uh, Dr. Hoy and I were talking about uh, divisions and breakdowns and stuff over the weekend. We are we are settled on doing pro pro men, pro women. Advanced men, advanced women, beginner men, beginner women, and we'll have a juniors division available as well. Yep. Um, Keep it simple. Yep. $25 entry, all divisions, trophy only, and we're going to have a bunch of cool prizes given away as CTPs and raffles. Uh, We've already got donations from a few people. Um, I got uh, Scooter Fortenberry, my friend Scooter, reached out to me, and she wants to donate a bunch of stuff. So she's going to be getting that to Katie at Tennessee State Doves this weekend. Nice. Um, and Kim and Ed, I think, are going to probably end up donating something. The store, uh, Bradford Watson at Flight Co., Chris Yelvington at oh. Full Flight, uh, Ladies First Disc Golf has uh, already said they would, and Dynamic Disc is sponsoring a Win Your Card, Win Your Prize. Awesome. Your card prize. And I think your card. Nashville Pediatric Infectious Disease, I'm going to be talking to their representative, but I believe they will likely come through. Yeah. Pulling uh, the old strings there, huh, Doc? Pulling the old <laughs> medical strings. Basically, I'm going to open my wallet and see if I got any money. <laughs> oh, well, you know. I'm thinking, well, gift, you, ca- I'm thinking gift card. Gift card? Sperry, card. Sperry's Steak, Cheesecake Factory? Yeah, everybody loves cheesecake. Oh, Cheesecake Factory. Right? Mm, you know, My Chick-fil-A. Kinda, yeah, Chick-fil-A is always good. Zach's piece, maybe. <laughs> Popeyes. I like some Popeyes. Wait, Costco gives Costco donations. Uh, you can see what they got. You know, they're you know corporate world. They're they're pretty sh- stingy with what they they donate. You, I mean, you saw the process last year for some actually water. Top Golf. Also, Smoky Mo- Mo- Oh, Smoky Mountain Disc is also donating nice. something and another round disc golf. I've got some that. wireless um, Bluetooth earbuds. I'm going to donate along with a. a Are they shoe new? Bag. Yeah, sweet. Cool. That's that's good. <laughs> Why would you two both think that I would? I didn't assume you <laughs> earbuds. You, it's yeah, you, Jay. You're doing your own thing <laughs> over there. I'm the way sure. you came up with that, I got some uh, crayons. Actually, <laughs> no, I got them the other day and was like, "Hey, I could donate these to the Tennessee School for the Blind tournament." We appreciate that. I know we do. Thanks. Appreciate. <laughs> what is this? Oh, Jesus! You guys. 
So yeah, if you Making guys would like, if, if anybody out there listening would like or watching would like to donate some stuff to that tournament, it's for a great cause. All that money that we raise from that fundraiser event is going to go to fund the Tennessee School for the Blinds uh, senior trip and their prom. Yeah. They're going to take the kids to Aspen, Colorado. It's going to be a really good time for them, and we want to help them do that. Um, also, reach out to us if you would like to be involved in instructing at any clinics or after work or after work, after school programs that we're going to be doing at uh, the TSB as well. Uh, shout out to Big Z for taking charge on that. Yep. So yep. we'll have we'll have some cool stuff going on in the afternoons, probably after the time change, following the theme. Um, yeah, take it out there and get the kids throwing some discs. Yep, so that'll be a good time. Uh, what else am I missing that we have coming up? I don't know. You got what's your little Pain agenda? Pain Ridge E two. That's that's the big coming one. up. That's a big one to mention. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sunday, March eighth. We are, uh, and I think I still managed not to be able to make the post earlier today, but we are going to be, hey, another podcast hey, hey. exclusive, right? Yeah. Exclusive. E- e- exclusive. I hope they're listening. You better be listening uh, or watching. Well, and either or. So we are going to be at Cane Ridge for event two on Sunday, March 8th. And after talking to a bunch of people and listening to everybody's opinions and comments and all that stuff, uh, we have decided that it's clear that everybody wants to play both courses and we've got some other cool events coming up there the women's global event is going to play on baby cane so it'll give the ladies a chance to play baby cane in advance of that um and everybody just enjoys hanging out together and playing the event together rather than being broken up in the morning and afternoon so we are going to do that once again so check-in will be for everybody at 7 30 a.m and that will run until 8 30 a.m and then we'll have a players meeting and we'll tee off at nine and that is what is on paper and we will likely be the last person or two will show up at about nine fifteen, and then yeah yep and then we'll redo the players meeting and call everybody back to get their scorecards and all the Our usual goal fun. is no nine. we'll, we'll <laughs> just kidding we'll get it locked down i mean we'll be prepared for 200 we'll be prepared for 200 people this time yep and it'll be uh it'll be easier to do with everybody signing up um for Two different sides at once. We'll have AMs are going to be starting on Baby Kane, and pros and ladies are going to be starting on Big Daddy Kane. And I think that the time disparity as far as the round lengths will mostly be um, between the first round and the second round. So, or no, um, sorry, at the end of the second round, because you're going to have the pros will play Baby Kane very quickly, and the AMs will take a little bit longer on Big Daddy Kane. Uh, so that will allow us to get the pro award ceremony out of the way as the AMP cards are starting to come in. So we anticipate being able to run this one really smoothly. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Just another one that we all get to hang out with each other at again. So Let's do it. Yep. And we're back to normal pricing as well. So that's going to be $15 for AMPs and 20 for pros. And that automatically gets you in for the ACE and CTP and all that stuff. So shout out to you guys of the of the club as well for coming out in droves. For the first event and getting people out and about and coming out and seeing what it's all about. 180 people. That's definitely, I think, the biggest. 182 people is a record. I think that was what the final number was, 182. So shout out to you guys. Yep. Thanks for coming out. Um, It's always fun to see y'all. And, man, we've I think we've probably mentioned this in the last week or two, but just seeing so many new faces. Like a lot of you guys that showed up I'd never seen before, had no idea what your name was, and I'll probably take me a while to learn it because there's a lot of you now. But mm-hmm. that's just that's a great problem to have. Yeah. Just yeah. tons of people. And I'll take it. I know it made things kind of run a little hunky, chunky, hunky, not hunky-dory. Opposite of hunky-dory <laughs> at E1. Dory hunky. But, I mean, 182 people, they have sign-ups, and a 31-hole course that took six hours to play, there that was not going to get much better than that i don't think so um yeah but we're going to be hitting the road running for e2 so we look forward yep. to seeing everybody out there yes sir yep. yes and yes ma'am ma'ams mm-hmm. mamsels yeah. whatever you guys you know what i'm talking about should we ladies. get into our guest yeah we can go ahead and do that uh i'm gonna like i said guys hop keep on my in. fingers crossed i'm gonna try and get this video corrected so you can hear what chris is saying <laughs> but uh it was a really fun talk with crit with him and he just finishing up off of vegas and heading into scott into phoenix for the memorial coming up um talked a little bit about some side ventures he's got going on with zoe and you play disc golf uh teaching some clinics and things like that talk a little bit about his tour series disc 
and uh, it's a lot of fun. So hopefully you'll get to enjoy it as much as we did. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was a good one. What's up, man? <laughs> Where you guys at? Starbucks? Chick-fil-A? <laughs> Walmart. Okay. Nice. Did you get that camera going too, Will? You got your little coffee thing? Will. On the Skype, you're only going to be able to see this camera, so you might want to tuck in a little bit, Jay. If you can, or I can try and turn this a little bit. Um, All right. And we are live. Everybody. What? We're actually Hi. we're we're hot. We're recording. Oh no, you don't say. What's up, Chris? <laughs> How's it going? It's been raining all day in Nashville. How's the weather in? Are you in Scottsdale or Phoenix? Uh, Phoenix. It's the uh, perfect, literally perfect. Figures. That's yeah. About our life. Couldn't it couldn't be any better. So you just wrapped up at Las Vegas, and we've been looking at the results from that. I know you probably didn't finish exactly where you wanted to be, but how was that experience for you, uh, starting from just getting there, practicing, entering round one? Uh, it was good. You know, I think the definitely like the first nine holes of the tournament, uh, I was just kind of easing into tournament play. It had been like three and a half months since I'd play a, played like a competitive round, so... Um, once I, you know, did that, I got some pars, got a couple birdies and then I started kind of, kind of going for stuff and playing more confident. Um, each round I felt like I played pretty well, you know, six to nine holes. And then some of them were just, you know, not great. Had to lay up some, you know, longer risky putts. Um, and then the last day I started out really well, um, and had a couple OBs cause my forehand just kind of started clicking. Um, I'd been kind of wonky with it the first three rounds. And then the last day I started to like actually hit it hard. And so I went OB long on a couple holes to where I really wasn't expecting to. So it sucked to go OB, but now my forehand's good and it's feeling good. So I know what to expect now. Is that, does that court, the, uh, the, it, you guys only played on the one how about you guys only played on the one course there, right? Or did you play the the infinite and the end of a course? Uh, we played all three courses. All three, okay. Um, yeah, the first day that course is man, I'd say like twelve to fifteen shots are basically just like four hundred to four hundred and fifty foot forehands for me, um, and. It's a pretty easy course, and if you get really close and make putts, you can score really well. Um, and that's how it's been the last couple of years. There's usually guys who nobody's really heard of at the top of the leaderboard, um, and just because they you know, really well on that course. But then we start playing some tougher courses, and that kind of uh, you know you got to throw different shots and stuff like that. So. Uh, the end of a course, the one we played in round two and round four is by far my favorite. It has, you know, a little bit, a little bit of backhand, forehand, short shots, placement shots, distant shots. It kind of has everything. Cool. Um, I know that this isn't an NT anymore, so it's kind of a lot of the grandeur maybe has been removed from the Las Vegas challenge, but looking at the, uh, the registration list everybody that was there it didn't seem like very many people missed it is this kind of like a tune-up for the season is that still uh part of the consideration for you think people turning out for this event in 2020 uh yeah i think this is my third year coming and i i know uh each round especially the first round um every year it's kind of felt the same it's kind of like okay don't make any mistakes. You know, I'm I'm playing very tentatively, trying to ease back into playing competitively because, you know, you can do as much field work as you want and stuff like that, but until you actually, you know, are playing in a tournament where it actually matters, you know, then then you, you get that pressure. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it felt great to be back, and the weather was really, really good this year, so it was fun. <laughs> We have a we have an unexpected guest in the podcast studio. <laughs> I was going to say it's all good. Um, 
Great. So you guys didn't see any of the terrible weather that happened out there in, in 2019 with it randomly snowing in Vegas. Right. No, none of that this year. We had a little bit of rain on the third round, but it wasn't anything that we haven't played in before. Gotcha. So I know uh, you told me earlier that you went to dinner with Zoe and Dyke to talk about uh, plans for some kids clinics and stuff coming up. Um, mm -hmm. Is that tell us a little bit about that? What do you guys have planned? We had Zoe on recently talking um, about play. So. Yeah, we're that is tonight, actually, after this, um, we're going to meet Zoe and Dustin. They're cooking dinner for us. Um, I think it's me, Jordan Castro. I think Paige Pierce, Simon, um, and we're going to actually the guy that we're staying with here, he is a, a PE teacher, and we're going to be working with his classes, like kindergarten through eighth grade, and we're going to be basically just coming in and, you know, working with kids and showing them disc golf. So that's, I, I love doing stuff like that, so I'm excited. Yeah, that's awesome. I saw, I know that you had previously worked with uh with kids and developmentally disabled people. So this is kind of in your wheelhouse. Um, and I know obviously you and Zoe have been friends for a long time. So um, how did that connection come about? Like, did she reach out to you guys uh, to start looking at places along the tour that you guys could maybe plug into at schools and start teaching with their PE program? Is it trying kind um, of a traveling thing? Yeah. I know she's kind of stayed to Oregon uh, for a large part. Yeah, she's she's been heavily involved in uh, clinics and, you know, working with different people for a long time. Um, and for me, like my job, kind of, I would help people and stuff. And so being, we were both on DD the last couple of years. And so, you know, we did a lot of clinics together. And I think she kind of saw that I enjoyed doing it. So she hit up Jordan Castro and was like, hey, would Chris be interested in this? And he gave her my information. And I was like, yeah, of course. I would be interested in it. And so, yeah, I think we'll probably do some different stuff throughout the year. You know, if she's doing anything like that and I'm in the same place, I'll probably be there. That's awesome stuff, man. Um, we just recently are making a big push to get stuff going on in schools, too. Uh, we've got a couple of our members are starting. Uh, Ruthie's starting the after school program at the YMCA with disc golf and Michael Holland who's actually a fifth grade teacher, he's starting a disc golf club for his fifth graders there too. And we're working with Tennessee School for the Blind here in Nashville to bring some uh, after school programs, clinics, that kind of thing to them as well. And I've talked to Zoe a little bit about <laughs> getting advice on how to approach that kind of thing as well. Yeah, I was wondering, super I'm cool, sorry. I think. Go ahead. I was just wondering how you balance you know, your time because all these things that you sound like you know you want to sign up for, but you also got to keep the play in mind. Um, how do you kind of balance that? Because I figure you come into town, yeah, and try to practice uh, courses, game time, and then it's next stop. Uh, yeah, it's 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 definitely a balance and something you know you kind of learn you go and um i mean i've played these courses before i've played out in hills and this stuff um and so you just kind of kind of have to make time you know and my game feels good right now so i'm i don't feel like i'm missing out um too much and uh yeah you just i mean you have to make time to you know give back and like do other things than than just play and practice you know, the, of course, practice is, like, my number one priority. But, you know, if you get out early in the morning and get your practice done, then you have an opportunity to, you know, do other stuff. And that's kind of what you have to do. Nice. How long have you been playing disc golf? When did, when did disc golf find you? Were you already working uh, with, you know, in the field of uh, helping people, teaching that kind of thing when you discovered disc golf? Or did they... Were you, did you start young? Um, I started in high school. So like 2005, I was a junior and my friend just kind of introduced me to it. Uh, and he was introduced by his mom actually. 
And so I went out with a couple buddies, and it was the first time I'd, I'd ever thrown a disc or a frisbee. Um, but I played other sports, and so I was like, yeah, this sounds fun. And it was really, really hard. I was really, really bad for a while. Um, and then I think kind of that summer, we started going out every single day. And we would play doubles against each other and play all the time. Um, yeah, and then it just kind of kind of built from there. Is that something that you've actively tried to cultivate is merging like your life outside of disc golf with how you're applying yourself in disc golf as far as um, teaching clinics and working with you play and that kind of thing? Or is that just like an added benefit? Um, you know, I, I did struggle with that. Uh, so, you know, I would work uh, like, a, you know, a normal person, I'd work throughout the week and then I would play tournaments on the weekend. And then when I started making the transfer uh, to kind of a full-time pro and especially a touring pro my first year in 2018, uh, I definitely had it. It's tough because I felt like I kind of lost kind of like a meaning for my life, you know, because I had always like worked with people and I enjoyed that. Um, and so just playing disc golf, it, it was like, it felt kind of selfish and it felt like I, I wasn't, I, I was kind of lost to be honest. And so being able to do clinics and do things like this with Zoe and, uh, you know, do things along the way and answer questions when people ask me on Facebook and, you know, make videos and stuff like that. That's a way that I, I feel like I'm, you know, helping people, which I, I love to do. So yeah, it's been a learning experience to learn how to you know, mesh the two because I love competing. You know, I love practicing. That's when I wake up every day. That's what I want to do. Um, but, you know, it's a balance of things and it's something you have to learn how to do. Yeah. It's, it seemed like in 2019, I think at Worlds, you really started clicking. Were you working on something that just kind of worked out then? Or it, it seemed like definitely last year, the last half of the season, you were on lead card. <coughs> you played at least usually one and two multiple rounds. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it was just, uh, you know, a combination of a couple things, just be becoming more comfortable uh, playing some of the tournaments. You know, the year before, it was my first time at a lot of these tournaments, so learning courses. Um, yeah, and just my form was working and putting. I was gaining confidence. Uh, I was very happy, like, in my personal life with my girlfriend. Um, you know, things just kind of clicked. And uh, preparation, I learned how to and how to on the road. You know, before, when I was at home, I was more, I had kind of a strict regimen of when I would practice and what I would do the day before a tournament and stuff like that. But when you're on the road, like, sometimes you can't do the things that you want or need to do, and so you have to adapt. And so I learned how to adapt and just kind of go with the flow. Um, you know, and I was, I, you know, I had thrown well all year, but sometimes, you know, you just get unlucky sometimes with rolls or tree kicks. And when I was playing well, it was like everything kind of went my way. So I just kind of rolled with it. It was that Music City magic. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah, may, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it was my first time there. It was a lot of fun. I'm excited to come back. We're looking forward to having you. Yeah, for sure. I want to know what life yeah. has been like before and after USDGC last year. Mm, nothing's really changed. I... I noticed that I get a lot more messages and followers and stuff like that on social media. Um, but in general, you know, my approach is still the same. I think maybe I have some more confidence knowing that I can perform on the big stage and, you know, perform in big situations against the best players. Uh, one, once you do that and you kind of prove to yourself that you can, it gives you confidence, you know, and we all, Everybody out here kind of believes that they can, but until you actually do it, you know, you don't know. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I have more confidence, and I try to hone in how I was playing then and how I was feeling, and I want to bring that into, you know, every tournament I play now. 
Is there a way, I know you can simulate that in practice, that confidence, that mental, but do you do things to try to like oh, work on that or do any kind of mental uh, meditation? Or, or um, of yeah, I think, you know, and that was another thing that probably helped too. Before when I would practice, um, like before mid-season last year, I think around Beaver State Fling, I started to um, play more scoring rounds and like competitive rounds against mostly against Jordan Castro. <coughs> so we would we would keep it competitive. You know, we would practice the course once or twice, and then you know the day before the tournament or two days before we would start playing actual like tournament feel rounds where 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 you threw it is where you had to play it. And so you get a, an idea for, you know, what you're going to do during the tournament, you know, because you can go up there and practice a course and throw three drives each hole and then take, you know, one of them and, you know, putt out or whatever. But until you actually am like, okay, I'm throwing this disc on this shot on this hole, like you don't really know what's going to happen. And so playing those scoring rounds, it, it kind of gets you in the mode. And I remember before that, I would kind of, the first round of the tournament, I would kind of struggle a little bit and then have to play catch up, you know, start out like 35th or 40th and then try to battle back into the top 20. And so I was like, maybe if I start playing like a tournament round before the tournament actually starts, then I'll be ready. And by the time, you know, it does actually start, I'll feel like I already have a round under my belt. And so that, that definitely helped. Does the four round versus three rounds, you think it's better? Do you like tournaments that have four rounds better? I know I just saw the Vegas four rounds, you play three courses. Um, does that help you feel like you have a better shot because your game will rise to the top, or how do you, or does it make a difference? Um, you know, I think it, it really depends. Usually, if we are playing four rounds in a tournament, <coughs> uh, we're playing a couple different courses. Um, and if we're playing three rounds, it's usually like, like if I think when we play Waco, we'll probably play three rounds. I think, I don't remember, but cause we're playing one course. Um, I like playing the same course, you know, Vegas, we play three different courses. I wish we just played Innova cause I think it's the best course of them all. Um, but yeah, I do think over four rounds, the cream kind of does rise to the, to the top, you know, um, those like you because everybody can have like a really hot round but to be able to do it over three four or five rounds is really what sets you know the top pros apart from everybody else i want to know just from your perspective having just been there and played the course and played this whole uh obviously everybody's talking about garrett's ace uh, on the par four and i want to mention he made it look super super easy but for you, uh, looking at that green from the coverage, <laughs> it looks risky as crap. Like, b- b- uh, bunkers on both sides. Um, so, from your perspective, how aggressive was he playing that? How uh, fortunate was he to get that ace? And what was the risk-reward like on that hole? Well, um, in the past, I have, like, tried to lay it up. Um, but I feel like the layup's not that easy especially if the wind's up and in the layup. So if you lay up to a zone, then you still have to make an up shot and that can go a little awry as well. It did, it did my practice round. I think I got a bogey on it. Um, and it's, it's pretty tough. So I think that going for it is the smartest play because if you throw into a bunker, which, you know, throwing at 425 feet on a hyzer for a righty is, we all should be able to do that into an area that's like 80 feet wide, you know, considering both bunkers. Um, and then you have a putt for a birdie, or if you're not comfortable, then lay up for a par. That's not, not a bad thing to do. Um, for Garrett, I think if he didn't hit that basket, it was OB long, 100%. That thing was coming in hot. And the OB, it drops off right after the basket. It drops off, and there's a trail behind there. Um, I think the higher you can throw it, um, the better because it kind of spikes in. Um, but I don't know. Garrett might have been trying to ace it, honestly. He might have just been going for the pin. You know, why not? Yeah, it was uh, it was very impressive. I was just uh, kind of looking at what I could see of the hole and trying to envision, like, 
you know, from a pro's standpoint, what that would feel like weighing that decision in your mind, whether to run it or try and play it safe. I didn't know. It, I couldn't tell if there was any kind of a safe place to even try to lay it up. Sure. You know, yeah. there's not much of it. And I'm pretty, I'm a pretty safe player. Um, if there was a good landing zone for me to lay up, I would. But I know on that whole, the layup is really to just throw it up there. And if you if you get lucky, you get lucky. I've heard that they're going to make any OB next year, I think, like on the green and left and stuff like that, go to the drop zone. Um, I think, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to mess with that hole. You know, it's, I think it plays more of like a par three. The only thing that makes it a par four is like all the danger around it. Um, I, I don't know. It's it's a weird hole. It's definitely better than the Triple Island hole, though. That's for sure. Have you guys talked to the TDs about the layout a lot of times, or just kind of talk amongst yourselves? Or does it seem like some of the holes change like? You might be 20 feet further, and the tee was a little bit back, but some of them were pretty locked in where they are. Um, but it seemed like there were a lot of changes on maybe moving the tee about 50 to 60 feet forwards or backwards. Yeah. Um, you know, some TDs, especially like on the Disc Golf Pro Tour, they, uh, Jeff Spring, he like wants all of our input. Um, we, we're con- in constant, like all the pros, the touring pros are in constant conversation with him about making the courses better, um, you know, making it more fun to watch and more fun to play and more fair. Um, you know, some CDs do want feedback on how the course is playing and how it could be better. Um, and some just, I, I don't know if they like ask or what. Uh, most CDs are good about it, though, and they're open to our criticism. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, cause, cause I come, I'm constantly talking about how the course is playing because I'm left-handed. So it plays different for me than a lot of other people. Uh, this week, especially in Vegas, I know I throw so many forehands, like my arm hurts by the end of it. And, uh, if you look at a lot of the, a lot of the top guys, it's a lot of dominant backhand players who throw really this far. And so that's who it caters to. And that's, that's fine. I think I might have been the only left-handed player in the tournament. Um, and there's probably a reason why lefties don't come there. But for me, I don't care. I should be able to adapt and do my best on whatever course there is. It does seem like there's more effort being made these days to make it like an even balance of lefty-friendly, righty-friendly type stuff or try to avoid holes that favor particularly one over the other. Um, that definitely didn't used to be the case. It was like... Hmm. If you were, if you wanted to make a course impossible to play, the idea was to make everything, you know, lefty friendly. But well, back in the day, you were right. shooting shots. Yeah, yeah, everybody's got a forehand now. You know, yeah, everybody, everybody, everybody that's now. in contention is yeah. throwing the side. Yeah, back in the day, you were throwing turnovers or being anti the shots. You see a lot of that finesse style stuff kind of going on away because you have the, the forehand. Yeah, is uh, that true right. that everybody has forehand? I mean, not everybody, but you have. I mean, like even some of the guys who you don't see throw forehand when they need it, they can pull the forehand out. I didn't see Pablo throw forehand. Yeah, <laughs> more like Nate Doss. Like you I wouldn't think, think it, but Nate Doss being crushing. Yeah. Yeah, Nate Doss. He has pretty good forehand. You go. You can throw like four hundred. Yeah. But I think like if you, I I tell people this. Uh, so think about Maple Hill Hole 14. That's the water hole, right? Uh, there, there, not that I know of anyways, there is no shot that exists in disc golf, at least on the Pro Tour, that you reverse that hole, and that's a pure lefty backhand. Like, people, they just would nobody would make a hole like that because people don't want to play something like that. People don't have 450-foot forehands in disc golf or very few people do and uh i i want to see more holes like that to be honest because i have to throw 450 foot forehands over water all the time because <laughs> yeah that other one that's on maple hill that turns right it's like much short it's i mm-hmm. it's like hole four and like the basket's elevated and it's over the water but it's 250 right to eight. right a lot of people say, oh, this is a lefty hole. And I'm like, well, it's only 300 feet. 
Like, you should have a 300-foot forehand, you know, if you're playing pro. Right. That's very true. Wise words. Let's yeah. make it happen, TDs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I know every time a decision is made on the administrative side of things, whether it be in scheduling or in media, it it has a way of affecting you guys that I don't think a lot of uh, people that are following you are aware of. Um, just like, you know, now, you know, something is minor, well, something is relatively minor as a uh, sanctioning level of an event. Like, obviously, you know, everybody still wants to go to Las Vegas, whether or not it's a national tour event. Um, but I was thinking in terms of a couple things that are kind of in the conversation right now in the public, as far as disc golf goes with, one being the announcement from the Disc Golf Pro Tour of uh, the paywall for certain coverage on the live side. And um, also there's a lot of talk going on about, well, we'll get to that in a second. But what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Because, um, you know, does that affect your visibility in any way? Uh, who do you feel like, how, do you feel you're, like you're getting more visibility from the live or from the post-produced? Yes, hello. Probably through the disc golf network and how they're going to um, make that paid, I assume. Yeah. I think I Thank might be know. losing me here. Oh, kind of yeah, you cut out on us for just a second there. Yeah. It's getting a little laggy. All right. I think, uh, so I think. Good. Um, I think I think it's good for the Disc Golf Network. Um, I think people will get on board. Um, it feels like it's kind of the the future um, of the sport because we're getting bigger and big, bigger. Um, you know, being on Jomez is always a good thing for sure. I think most people who see Disc Golf on YouTube, they're watching Jomez. Um, you know, they do a really good job. Um, you know, I, for me, being on live or, you know, post-produce is better. I think being on both. Like, if you're on one, you're probably on the other. Um, you know, but yeah, I'm excited to see where it's going. You know, this year is pretty big for disc golf in general, and I'm I'm pretty excited. You know, we, we talk a lot in the Disc Golf Pro Tour. We talk a lot about a you know, the future, and there's going to be some cool things that happen this year, and I think it'll be good. Yeah, def definitely everything's changing. Um, there's been a lot of talk recently, too, about the memorial that's coming up that everybody's out there in Phoenix to play. Um, a lot of uh, There's a lot of people saying that there are issues with the course and uh, the event that should remove it from its position as a uh, national tour event or something of that major scale um do you it's a memorial national tour it is a national tour it's a disc golf pro tour, it's a disc it's tour? Yeah, okay yeah or a pro tour event something yeah. of that scale um how do you feel about that i know there have been safety concerns uh there's been mm -hmm. layout concerns and also there's you still have that school of thought that's you know still uh favoring tradition and the legacy of the memorial right um, so my first year was, I think, two years ago. This will be my third year playing this tournament. And each year that I've been coming, there's been, like, serious conversation about what to do. And I know after last year's memorial, I believe, we kind of had a poll on Facebook amongst, like, touring pros about where what we want to do with the memorial, like, where we want to play. And I, if I remember correctly, most said that we should just play Vista. We have, you know, outgrown Fountain Hills. It's, it's beautiful and it's cool to play at and stuff, but it's just not up to, you know, it doesn't test us. You know, we, we've got people shooting 15 and 16 under there. It's just a bunch of big hyzers, you know, and people say that they don't want to watch it because it's boring to watch. Um, you know, Vista requires a lot more line hitting, but both of them, there's tons of people walking, you know, people get hit almost every year. Um, yeah, I, if, if I were to bet, I'd say in like five years, the memorial will exist, but 
probably in neither one of these courses. They're probably going to make some new awesome course, I would imagine. Cool. Um, I also wanted to make sure we talked about, you've got your Tour Series disc coming out here soon, the Lucid X Verdict. Uh, when is yours dropping to the general public? Uh, the 27th. So I believe that's Friday. Sweet. So definitely, and they usually release around noon. So all you guys definitely make sure you set a reminder to go to dynamicdisc.com this Friday at noon and get yourself uh, Lucid X Chris Clemens Tour Series Verdict. And Appreciate the other that. one that's releasing that day is, is AJ's, right? The Warden? Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool. The Warden, and then I believe Nico. I think it's a Fortress. That's correct. Yeah. That. The IPX Fortress. Cool. I was just wondering where Clemonade. I mean, I know Clemens, Lemons, but when did that come about? Has that always been your nickname, or that came about in disc golf? Or? No. Was, I think was, was it Cohen? I think it was Kyle. Webster, I believe, Webster. that just started calling me Clemonade, uh, and then it just kind of grew from there, um, you know, and it's catchy, and, you know, I made this stamp with the lemons, you know, and so it just kind of kind of grew from there, so I got Kyle to think for that one, and that was like, that was after I started playing this ball, so it was probably like 2013, something like that. Sweet. So I know you're more a poppy guy than a lemonade <laughs> Let me give it away. What? I said you're more of a coffee guy than a lemonade guy. I mean, you, you, you got your yeah. like arrow press yeah. and birdie tool. Yes, yes. I do I do love my coffee. I drink like a cup every morning. Some people drink it like all day, and I can't do that. If I drink it afternoon, I won't sleep at night. Uh, uh, but I do like lemonade, too. I, I like them both. Um, we did have a listener question for you, Chris. Uh, Dallas Wrinkle wants to know where his triple X's are at. If, if I were guess probably in the lake at Winthrop uh, on hole 17. I know I threw one in there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, there you go, Dallas. There's your answer. They're gone forever. They're gone forever. Well, until yeah. somebody comes it. Yeah. Somebody probably scooped us that pond. I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. I would have thrown I mean, oh, so, yeah. I would hope. There's probably people that plan road trips to Winthrop just to get in that lake and see what they find. I don't know, man. They're pretty, they're pretty strict on that lake. Are they? The campus is. That's, that's you true. Sneak off you'll the get, property you'll get, get out, out of there. The yeah, they're yeah. real strict on that lake. But mm-hmm. maybe people sneak on there. I, would, I don't know. It's not like it's a super not as strict campus. as Lake Eureka. I mean, when uh, Oakland was in there. Was no. Eureka? Yeah, Lake Eureka, I think. I don't Lunch know. Down when he. Was in there floating? Yeah. They made that disc stand. Yeah, the one at Fountain Hill was pretty gross too. I threw a disc in there today, and it's like oh, green. You can't even see it. Uh, Isn't that like a sewage treatment runoff? Reclaimed. Like yeah. Reclaimed yeah. yeah. It's like reclaimed. Like the houses surrounding Fountain Hill from the fountain when it blows, like the like the stucco and stuff is coming off just after years and years of getting hit with that water. It's pretty gross. Plus, there's actively swans and ducks crapping in it. Yeah. So uh, I've yeah. I've talked to several people that have gone tromping around in there after something, and not a pleasant experience I mean, by all accounts. No, and so, I've been in there. It's not far too. Yeah. Those kids, dude. Those kids after y'all left for us, all the discs that were in that nasty, nasty water. <laughs> Me and Zach are up at the top of Tournament Central, like, cleaning everything up, and these kids come up and are like, we got all these discs if you want to buy them. We're yeah, like, what? <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, they got names and numbers on them, bro. You need to hand them over. We broke yep. them I'll give you a new disc that's, like, two, worth $2, but it's brand new for those old, ugly discs. Right. Yeah. Like, they'll probably take that. Yeah, they, oh, they, they took, took it. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were stoked. <laughs> Either that or kneecaps getting broken. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Um, a lot of valuable discs in that one. Yeah, yeah, there were. Well, every year we go back, like, because we've been doing stuff at Ravenwood since, like, 2014. And I know last year when we were getting Ravenwood ready for the tournament, we found one of yours yeah. from the Rumble. What was yeah. it? Rumble? Uh, a, a beast. Actually. A beast that so he had thrown beast. at the tournament back in 2014. We managed to pull it out of the lake while we were clear cut. Dude, that thing was, like, 
what was it? Where we want to believe like hole eight. Yeah. I think. And it plays the opposite of what hole two did this year. Or no, I don't know which hole was this year. But it played the opposite. So that thing was over there on the left side by the road where those houses are being built. So I thought, no way in, in the hell I'm going to get that back. No. Sure enough. <laughs> Well, man, I know you've got dinner plans tonight, and I don't want to keep you from your evening. Um, real quick, tell everybody where they can follow you on social media, and tell us about anything you've got coming up that you'd like everybody to be aware of. Um, yeah, I'm on Instagram at DD Clemonade, and then I'm on I'm on Facebook. You can message me on either one of those. Ask me questions. I get people asking me all the time, like bag, like what their bag looks like, if they have any suggestions and stuff like that, and. I love answering those. Um, yeah, and I'm I just want to play well. Hopefully, make it on some on some lead card coverage soon. Uh, my lucid expert is dropping soon, so yeah, I'm excited to get the season started. Um, it was it, it was a short off season, but that's how I wanted it. I was ready to get back out. Yeah, yeah, I definitely get all of my golfing in during the off season. <laughs> the only golf we really I mean, I believe golf. it. You and Castro could make a TikTok video. Just putting it out there. That's that's probably true. Some like our travel travel adventures or something. I, I don't know. It just seems like yeah. Uh, yeah, we t- we cool. talked about that a little last year, but I think we have the cap- more capability this year, and we'll have some more time to do stuff like that. It'll be fun. I really loved the video that DD put out. Uh, your little player profile they did of you. I thought that mm-hmm. was really really well done on Bobby's part and really cool visibility of you as a person. I know that that really is what generates a lot of the following that you guys enjoy on the tour is, um, you know, making yourself appear relatable and, and visible and things like that and accessible. You got plans to release more video content or stuff like that, maybe a Patreon page that people can look forward to. Um, yeah, Bobby, he came down, he kind of had the idea and he called me, I think it was November. Um, I think he came in December and he was there for about three days and uh, we did a lot of filming. And so he has more stuff to put out, you know, and it was all his vision. He definitely had like all these ideas. And I was like, yeah, man, I'll be the model. You just tell me where to go and what to do. And, you know, we'll do it. Um, but yeah, he's, he's doing them on Eric and Paige and, you know, the whole team basically. Um, but yeah, he'll have more stuff coming out and, you know, we kind of like, as Rusko said in a, you know, he released a statement saying like, we kind of made our team smaller so we could do more stuff like this. Um, so, you know, because in the past when we'd all come to the Memorial, like Rusko, Bobby, Robert McCall would all come. And then we have like, you know, 10 players and it's really, really hard to do a lot of in-depth stuff like that with, with. 10 different players, you know, so only having, you know, five or six makes it a lot easier. And so, yeah, I think Bobby did really good with it. And I'm excited to do more stuff like that because you were right. Like people want to relate, you know, they find something that they like in the person and then they want to cheer you on, you know, you're not just like another golfer. And so that's kind of how you, you know, gain a fan, you know, and you talk to them and stuff like that. So I think it's really good. It's really cool. It's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, that is that is really good. It's really it's really cool that you're seeing some different formats or different structures that companies are coming out with to try different things to see about getting these pros taken care of. And it's, it's really nice to see because these guys work hard. And, and the background. Finally, time you started getting rewarded. The background. There's so many varied backgrounds, and like I said you work with Alzheimer's patients and dementia patients, and I mean just the crazy places people come from. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of people, you know, they might not know. And that's stuff that people want to know because maybe people, you know, some people do the same thing or their, you know, dad has dementia or something. And so they're like, hey, maybe I should talk to him about that. That's how I kind of met Todd Rainwater with the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Like his dad had dementia. And so we, you know, related and talked about that. And so, yeah, just when you actually sit down and talk to somebody, you learn, you learn a lot of things. And so I think that's kind of the direction, you know, at least DD is wanting to go with some of the players uh, and probably just everybody, every disc golf company in general, you know, people want to know more 
more about us that they see, you know, almost every week, week playing. And so, yeah, I think it's super cool. Working. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it's nice to see stories in the pros, too, like getting built, getting names and actually background, like you were saying, well, it's it's something that's long overdue. Uh, yeah, I'm with Mo talking a lot about in that press release, talking about the Disc Golf Network. Um, one thing that we had talked about on the podcast with him and we've spoken of many times is the need that with our, our coverage, we need to be investing in and showcasing the storylines that are happening at these events as we're broadcasting them. And I think a big part of that has just as much to do with who the players are as it does to what they're doing on the course. I think if the more that people know about the background and, um, you know, uh, the character and the lifestyle of a player, the more they're going to be emotionally invested in those dramatic moments that happen sure. on the course. The and hero's journey. Right, absolutely. And hopefully that's something that this new coverage can pick up on and follow. I think yeah. one of the big things is I think, yeah, if you, like, watch, like when the Olympics come on, you know, every four years, almost every time, you know, somebody is about to swim or a cyclist or whatever, they always have like a minute or two like piece about like how they got there, you know, like their journey. So you, you're like emotionally invested. You're like, Oh, that's cool. You know, I want to follow this person now. And so, you know, I think we're getting big enough, you know, and enough people are seeing us playing disc golf because of YouTube and stuff that they want to, you know, learn more about us. And so, yeah, it's, it's super duper cool. And I think this year is going to be, you know, really, really big, uh, for all stuff like that. Sweet. Yeah, man. Uh, you doing any uh, you doing any private lessons while you're on the road? Anything that people should uh, reach out to you about? Possibly seeing if you can give us some tips while you're in their town, or um, you know, we'll probably we'll have DD clinic set up. I usually wherever Eric Oakley, because uh, he he's been doing the clinic game for years and years, and he has tons set up, and so. Usually wherever he is, I go. Um, private ones, I mean, yeah, you can contact me, you know, if I'm out at a course that day and we can meet up and play some holes together and I can work with you. Um, I think this year we'll have, you know, there'll be some time, like, between this tournament, Memorial, and Waco, we have a week, you know, where we're not going to, like, play any B or C tiers or anything like that. And so, yeah, that would be a time that I could do something like that. Yeah, just hit me up on Facebook or Instagram. Great. There you have it, folks. Yeah. Chris, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us, man. Uh, we, it was a lot of fun. We really appreciate it. And anytime you have something you want to get out on the airwaves, hit us up. We'd love to have you on again. Yeah, brother. Cool, cool, man. I appreciate you guys, too. Have fun. I'll... Uh, I'll see you guys fairly soon in a couple months here in Nashville. Right. It'll be a lot of fun. Definitely let us know what your timeline looks like so we can make plans to get you a look at the course for the NT and stuff. Yeah, for sure. That sounds like fun, boys. Have fun. I'll come on. A, I'll come on again soon. Before before Nashville. All right. Well, we look forward to it. We're gonna hold you to that. Yep. It's a date. All right. Not yet, but it will be. I'm down. <laughs> Tell Zoe and everybody we said hey. Yep. All right. We'll do. See you guys. Thanks, man. Oh, is that what you're saying? Okay. <clears throat> yep. So, thanks again to Chris. That was a lot of fun. Always good talking to him. Oh, good people. Hey, what's up, everybody? What up? Hey, we're back. Hey. Okay. Hey. Good to know. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks again to Chris. Sounds like he's gearing up for a big run this year. I'm really excited to see what he does. I'm a big fan of his. And, the old uh, lefty gravy. Old, old powerful lefty, as I heard says. Johnny Discoff interview him, and he said it was like a school reunion. Uh, like, you're coming back to class from the summer, and everybody's coming back, and they went to Vegas this week, but Memorial's just going to be more of that. So sure, everybody's gearing up. You get to see all the new, uh, you know, Pack, video packages and new graphics. Well, I'm excited. Disc Golf Mez Pro and, Tour this year yeah. with Chomez. Jomez. Sorry, Jomez. <laughs> Chomez. I like saying Jomez. But anyway, it's going to be big. Uh, you know, live coverage is going to be doing big things this year. 
Co- I mean, of course, Joe Mez always steps up their game every year. Yeah. We saw a little bit from Central Coast, a little Nate Sexton on some Central Coast action, too. Yeah, speaking of the Las Vegas chal- Challenge Ooh, You got that for us there, Mr. Details? Las Vegas I mean, Challenge. I mean, Dr. Details, excuse me. Funky Fresh in effect. Yeah, Nate Sexton took it down at 44 down. Boom. It shakalaka. was a four-round tournament. He shot a 1072, 1063, 1042, and 1056. He's been practicing. And he won it by two strokes over Garrett Gerthy. Nice. Who had an ace slash albatross, 432 foot par four. And he used a VIP emperor. Emperor. A disc I had not heard of. Hmm. Do you know anything about the I have West I Side? Is that, that West? So it's West Side Disc, VIP yeah, I don't emperor? Throw it. I don't know. I don't know. He's a not. Is he not a Nova? He's infant. Infinite disc, infinite, because oh, he had an Innova shirt on, and I did not. Know he that. spoke about the disc. On, there was like a video on YouTube of just the ace, uh, filmed by Gatekeeper that. Pro. They're going to be out there this year. So, and I watched some of the Gatekeeper Pro coverage. It's, not it's bad. looking good. Yeah, and they only really had good. two guys. Mm-hmm. So, they shout out to Gate. Good quality. Shout out to everybody who's thinking of, you know, just filming one of your local tournaments. Just film it and get it up there. Yep. Howard At first, Discoff, shout just out get you. it out there, you know. Yeah, dude, definitely shout out to uh, the guys at Gatekeeper because they're doing really good stuff. Yeah, but I mean, um, dude, Howard Disc Golf you mentioned. I mean, yeah. when, when awesome. they just started, it was just a couple years back. Yeah, and the quality of their videos has gotten astounding in the last couple years, yeah. and we really Absolutely. love bringing them back every year to MCO, and we intend to keep doing it. That's as right, well. Mr. Ben. And you I heard wanted. Of- I wanted to mention also the FPO results. Absolutely. We had Katrina Allen took it down with two down overall um, over nice. Evelina Salonen at one down. She's making big things in an, an on tour here in the States this year. In the final round, Katrina Allen threw a three down and Evelina threw a one down. So he I mean, a tight, tight comeback win. That, so. that coverage is up as well. Who had that coverage? I believe that was uh, CCDG as well. Central Coast had Central as well. Coast, yeah. Awesome. We'll check that out as well. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Jennifer Allen for taking down her first MP, pro uh, yeah, MP4 yeah, FP40. or FP40. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. FP40. FP40. My bad. FP40. So shout out to her for making the move to the yeah, cat, 40 division cat, this dude. year. Um, and I want to shout out. And Stuart Callie. McKissick. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just mentioning MP40. Stuart, uh, I'm not sure if, McIsaac. if that's McIsaac or Macklesack or how that's supposed to be. And I'm sorry for butchering it. Latitude 64 team player took down MP40 division in a playoff with Steve Rico. Nice. <laughs> so that big, was big obviously win. not easy to do. And so. Patrick Brown was there too. So that's yeah, and not, in the, not in the playoff, but he be was breezy. there. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Jay, what you're about to say, shout out to Callie McMorrin, mm-hmm. our she friend from Memphis. She played awesome this weekend. Yeah, fifth place in FPO. The list of names – that scored higher than her, man. Like she, yeah. she she's up there. She's a she's, she's a killing it. I I texted her today. I said, "Good shooting this weekend, Killa." She's got a tour series turnout as well, and yep. uh, she's awesome. She's a great golfer, great young lady. Her stamps are awesome su- on her tour her. series disc. So yeah, mm-hmm. you guys should get on the internets and buy you some Callie McMorrin fundraiser discs. Or any of those fundraiser discs are freaking sweet this year. Yep. From any of those guys. And, and just to round it out, MP50, Robert Bainbridge took it down over, over Big Jim Oates. Yep. Big Jim. 1,005 and 1,022 rated. Like, I mean, these guys. Like those boys don't jump. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't play. Yep. Uh, MP60, G. Scott Carley, C-A-R-L-E, took it down over Jeff Fielder. FP60, Suzette Simmons, Advanced, Cade Philo, Philomoela. Sorry about that. Uh, nice try. I applaud your efforts, sir. Yeah. I don't, that doesn't sound like a name FA1, I want to read. FA1, Rachel Mello, MA40, Alan Owings. All right. Cool. Okay. That's yeah, very that's good. good. That's good. Um, <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hater? Sorry. That's, no, no. Dang. I thought it was a I couple realize, divisions, but it just kept going. I didn't realize that there was uh, yeah, full Amfield as well with this. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. I yeah. Is it an A tier now? What? what uh, ma- is it a major A tier? What is it now? A tier, four yeah, round A tier. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. With first place in MPO taking home four thousand dollars. Not too shabby. Yep. <laughs> Starting off the season right. You Good didn't payday. See a, 
you know, you didn't see a lot of big names and what kind of catches or comes to mind whenever I, when I saw that at Vegas this year was just how we've been talking to the pros and how selective these guys are being this year. Um, Still some big names, you know, Nate Sexton, Philo, all yeah. those guys. Nate Sexton, Still Garrett Gurthy, there, Chris Clemens, Philo there. Brathwaite, Simon Lazat. Um, which, I mean, know, who do you – Wysocki. I mean, you didn't see Beth. <laughs> that that you know, was like and, the only well, one. Well, to be fair, he's been coming off of an injury too, so he's also trying probably yeah. not to, to play as much. I see that. Way. And you didn't you didn't see the appearance of uh, Brody Smith. Is it Smith Miller? He did play a tournament though. Yeah. yeah. I and he played that. pretty well. I don't remember what the name of it was, but I saw him. I think yeah, he did play. He what did he, what did he rate like nine seventy or something like that? I'm gonna say nine seventy. But I was Barsby there? I don't think he was out that way. I don't know. He wasn't. Um, so they're just just some names that I didn't see, and I haven't seen all the coverage or checked all the scores or anything just yet. But just some names I didn't see out there that normally are up at the top. You know, always catch people's eyes. Um, and I think it's just like they said, a testament to to them being a little more selective this year about what they're doing. Yeah, for sure. Um, and we've heard that over and over again from everybody on yeah. the tour and all of their, you know, schedule videos are just prior prioritizing the big ones yeah. because of the points value, the added cash at the end and the coverage and all of that. I mean, six events, the national tour, you've got Joe Mez central coast and GK pro. Yeah. So crazy. That's going to be, it, it, there's going to be a lot of really good disc golf to watch this mm-hmm. year. For uh, Vegas, the Triple Island Hole. What's up with that hole? It's been like that for a minute now, and it's every it's year. Like 280, I guess it's, uh, yeah, uh, 290 I mean, feet, and it's Triple Island with drop it's, zones. It's one of those holes that I guess uh, to me is gimmicky, and it's I mean like sure it's accurate and there's a risk to it and stuff like that, but I mean I don't know. But again, you're not one of the it people is what that it is. play it. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it is what it is to me. It's just... I'm sure it's like anything. I'm sure some people think it's cool. It's whatever. It's whatever, whatever dude. Whatever you like. Whatever makes your boat float. Some people don't like it. Some people do. You know, it's it's one of those. And at, and at that point, when, it stay, when it's an A-tier this year, and, and you know, well, why change it? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, talked about the tour series discs. For just a second there but there's a lot of cool ones coming out um we talked with chris a little bit about his tour series just coming out the lucid x verdict and mm-hmm. aj risley's uh lucid x warden is also dropping which is the one that yeah. i'm really excited about because i bag a lucid warden for my putter uh, off the tee my throwing putter ah i didn't know that yeah lucid warden and it's i really prefer the flat low ones so i'm really hoping that these are flat and low profile I don't. There's a lot of lucid wardens that are domey, and they they just don't feel right hmm. or fly right. To me. And that lucid so. plastic, yeah. And the, uh, but I made the comment that I'm hoping for some flat ones, and I got a. An, I think what I remember was a, a nod, an approving, verbal nod response. Oh. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm I'm really I the team. That's another team perk. I got to order them early before they drop on Whoa. Friday. So wow, flash it around. Yeah. So I've got some. I've got. Some, hey, I've, I got my tour series disc coming. Do you? I'm I've wait, seen I'm a waiting lot for my my Nashville disc golf store. Shout I've seen a Sean lot Grodin. of uh, everybody is making their sponsorship announcements. Like the past couple, like Flight Co. Nashville disc golf store. So congrats, to Aldi. I mean, everybody. Uh, there's so many so much money being directed into disc golf and people are really taking a look and doing different stuff about how they're approaching what they give out and what they incentivize. It sounds cliche, I guess, if you want to call it that, but we are literally, uh, literally watching the history of disc golf unfold in front of us and we're living in it. Yeah. All of this stuff that's happening right now is literally going to be the future of our sport in one way or the other. Things are going to change. Things are going to mix it up. It's just going to get different, and thing, people are going to try different things at this point in time because of the growth. And then what, does it, what we're going to find out are the things that work, the things that don't work, and where we're going as a sport from here. And it's also, I hate to say it, because you always want to see the rise, but as far as media and stuff goes, you know, there's a, I think that this year could be a make-or-break year as far as that goes. You know, maybe seeing some of this coverage and seeing some of the live stuff, maybe you do see a spot here or there on TV in the next couple of years. I mean, there was a really big, on the wintertime open, CBS LA, I don't know if KTLA or the CBS affiliate in LA, 
Oak Grove had an interview with Philo Brass. I saw that. And it was like a two to three minute, you know, Tim talking about the sport and the Oak Grove, one of the oldest courses, first course. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, that's Los Angeles. So it's, Jeez. it's making the rounds. I mean, definitely, definitely making their rounds. But you know what the best part about that whole thing, that interview was? They didn't say Frisbee golf. Yeah, no. they did no, not. Not one time. And I was yeah. like, yes! She called it disc golf. They had, Philo, shout out to you, buddy. You are the man. Um, but keeping them honest. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, always good to see Philo getting some shine, man. Uh, the true L.A. representative, man. Yeah, <laughs> Calm cool. and cool. Mr. Cool. Yeah, yeah. that he is. Yeah, he's a really good dude, and we had a lot of fun having him in town. And, yeah. But, yeah, you're right. It is going to take over. I mean, you're going to see all the major networks, sports networks, all that stuff covering disc golf. It'll be in the Olympics. I mean, it's crazy to think about all the things that have changed in the last five years, just let alone to imagine. Oh, hey, hey, what's up, buddy? Hey, sorry. Podcast going on here. Sorry. Podca- we got a podcast here. Parkour. Uh, we got a podcast. Par-, par forecast. Um, Something. Pars are in the forecast. Cast and pods. But yeah, it's all uh, you know. Where where we're gonna be like five, ten years from now is gonna be the stuff that everybody talks about all the time. You know, the co- the ESPN and big corporate sponsorships at events and all that stuff. That's gonna happen. I saw soon. the Japan Open is coming back in twenty twenty one. Yeah, people are super stoked about that. But it's a huge event. I mean, like I don't know if you watched any coverage from <laughs> yeah. a few years ago. Do they they go all out? And but your disc can only weigh 159.9. Oh, is it 59? Well, one, yeah, anything above 160 grams yeah. is considered a deadly weapon or something. So. Yep, that it is. So they won't let them throw them. So it's weird to see those guys throwing lightweight stuff. Yeah. But as we all know, I'm sure lightweight stuff can be just as stable sometimes. Yeah. Or air can be super it's understable. Lucid X Air stilettos. <laughs> yeah. Is that even a... could be? <laughs> well, we're talking about Jay the... Buckets probably <laughs> on those with all this growth stilettos. and everything. It makes me us, and I just want to say this: how appreciative and how fortunate we are to have the national tour finale right here in our very backyard. Yep, Music City Disc Golf, Music City Disc Golf Club, the whole Middle Tennessee disc golf scene area. You know, this is our, this is our time. If you want to be a part of that. Come help us. We want we want to get all the volunteers and all the help we can get. This is this is going to be huge. We want to make it everybody's event because we want to make this thing big and beautiful so that we can ride with that growth of disc golf here in Middle Tennessee and definitely here in Music City. Too. And Nashville does it up big. I mean, look Absolutely. at the NFL oh, we draft. Do. Like, but it's, it it's this year. It's it, it. I feel like it's not just. Music City, even though it is Music City, I feel like this year there's a lot that that the community is going to be a part of, like the community as a whole. I mean, this is a huge step for disc golf in Tennessee, yeah. even though it's in Nashville. And then that, you know, we were the, you know, the workers towards that goal that, you know, we were able to achieve. But it is one of those things that that the community, I feel like, is, is it's their event too, because it's huge. It's not yeah. just, just a small event anymore. And so... I hope that they, you know, you guys want to come out and, and help us out and be a part of that. We we definitely want to get, see you guys there, obviously, playing it. But, you know, if you're not, come help us. We would love love to have you. Yeah, and it's a big deal for everybody in Tennessee. I agree. And, and we're going to make it that for everybody. The Music City Open is always going to be the Music City Open. We're adding the national tour yeah. function to it, and it's, it's going to be huge. And you're right. It's good for Tennessee. We're going to see more and bigger – things happening in Tennessee in the very near future. And it, this is all just a step on the ladder. And it's really cool to be on the front lines. And Zach the Mundo. Put your hands to it and be able to see it take shape. We, You know, just out there at Mill Ridge on, uh, was it Sunday? Saturday. 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 Yeah. Uh, bushwhacking through the woods, cutting. Man. Cutting you fairways. Did, you did crazy work. Hey, check for ticks. I've already seen some. Yeah, I avoid Keep your them. eye on them. It's Mulligan. not been a very cold winter so far, really. No, no, and I've heard people. Uh, I've heard of people getting them all year, all winter long. Yes, yeah. November, December. I believe it, um, especially here. Mulligan man, let me borrow his long sleeve compression shirt so I didn't have any ticks. On. Oh yeah, nice, cool. Yeah, this is a nice. He's guy. a nice guy. He's all right. But and that's what's really also about that is we're working early 
to get it cleared up. But then again, there's not a whole, whole, whole lot of work to be done. You know, I mean, there is some, but nowhere near like Ravenwood. And so that that's super nice this year. What we're doing right now is pretty intimidating. Just the scale of it. It's, yeah. you know, it's, we're cutting a bunch of stuff out of the fairways on the wooded holes. And it's f- holes five and six that are real heavily wooded. And we're just basically creating a, a tunnel through these dense trees. Mm-hmm. And trying to thin it out in a sustainable way that's good for the ecology of that area. Because there's all kinds of crazy stuff growing out there. There's uh, cactus and on, it's uh, mm-hmm. it drains really interesting. There's a lot of limestone back there. Um, Not only just, you know, tee pads and fairways and all of that, but walking paths to get back there. Spectators areas, you know, it's a lot more clearing than you would think just to cut a a hole in, if you would. But you're right, compared to what we did at Ravenwood, while the work that we have to do is pretty intimidating, it's much better than anything we ever had to put up with at Ravenwood. Once we get through these two holes, the rest of it's pretty much there. So we're pretty close to being ready for the test event on the 14th and... Get, starting to get excited about that. It's going to be nice to see some people out there playing it this Absolutely. early in the year. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Really excited about that. And it's going to be dope, and you guys should come see it. There's an opportunity, like we mentioned, this coming Sunday mm-hmm. to get out there and help us work on holes five and six. And uh, we can show you all s- some cool stuff that we've got planned out there. Yeah. It is going to be uh, – when you – it's it's. I tell this to everybody. I was like, when you first step foot out there, ignore what your brain says as far as the golf goes, because it won't be like that. Yeah. Because like, when you walk out there, the first thing that's going to pop in your head is like, oh, really open, really far and long shots. But there yeah. are some, but it's not what you think it's going to be. And I've got, uh, for anybody that is interested, I've got a really cool Google Earth overlay Ooh, that yeah. I can share with you if you would like to get a hold of us, send us your email, uh, request that uh, file. I'll share it with you. You can take a look and zoom in 3D at all kinds of different angles and see how the holes play and what kind of because there's trees and yeah. uh, just on on every hole yeah. that are in play. There's pretty gonna, much yeah. There's going to be really tricky OB, a lot of elevation, a lot of ups and downs. Um, it's going to be a really challenging course, but it's also it's not going to be anything insane like uh, Ravenwood, like not insane like Ravenwood was, but like insane distance, like you know. Over a thousand feet, over a thousand feet, over a thousand feet. I don't think there's any holes out there that are over a thousand feet. There are some par fives. Uh, yeah, but that's going to be more so because of ha- having to place your disc to get to yeah your best angle. Yeah. Basically, there's going to be a lot of a lot of golf, if you will, as far as mental golf goes. Yeah, you're going to have to be playing where your disc is going to land, how you're going to throw it, what angle you're going to need to have to attack at this basket. A lot of, lot of mental golf out here. I assume some yeah, guys are going to be pretty mentally taxed by the time it's all said and done. The footage is 8,853 for the MPO. Oh, the footage? Footage. Yeah. Feetage. Feetage. Total, Feetage. total distance of the course. As opposed to, what was it, 15,000? 13,000. 13,000, yeah. 13, About 13. Something, 344 or something like that. Now there are long holes out there that some of the, these par fives are eight nine hundred feet. Yeah. So. Yeah. There's a seven ninety nine. Yep. Nine seventy four. That's the longest one. Pushing it. Hole eight. Yep. I'm really excited about the course. Um, I want to go ahead and shout out the people that came out and helped us work on Saturday. Uh, Ruthie and Jamie Miller. Thanks to them because you guys are always at everything we do. Yep. Um, Big Z was out there with me. Sean Sinclair was out there. Uh, Jeffrey Butler and his lady friend, Kara, uh, they came out and Jeff is a friend of Katie Holbrooks from Ohio that that lives here now. He's opening up a business out here and stuff. Oh, cool. Very cool. Um, really cool guy brought a bunch of tools and was a big help out there uh, on Saturday. Um, we also were joined by Kyle Batten. Mm -hmm. So big thanks to Kyle. Um, and Dr. Hoy was there. Am I missing anybody? I showed up. There. I didn't really. Oh, I, I did Skinner move some twigs, there. but had work. So. Yeah, Skinner showed up to <laughs> check it out. Move some twigs. And, and, and do some scheming. Approve. Yeah, we did. Uh, after everybody kind of cut out of there, cheesed it out of there, Jay and I drove around the property for a little while, scoping out our plan for parking and vending and Tournament Central and awards and all that stuff, yeah. and made a lot of good headway. I'm Now I can work on something on Google Maps that can be shared with Metro and with the parks people to kind of pr- – propose what we are going yeah. to do and i think 
I think that proposal shouldn't be an issue. And I was telling Zach about it earlier, and he was asking. I was like, that it you can't really tell it from the overhead photo, but that area up there is huge. So yeah. I think we're gonna have plenty of plenty of the space for that. Yeah, I mean, looking at it on Google Maps is really misleading. Uh, yeah, it really is. You cannot tell a lick of the elevation. I remember the spot that you and me, Jay, were, st- yeah. were standing at when we were scoping out the, for uh, spectator parking. Yeah. I, you look at it on Google Maps, and it's flat. But it, I, would, I don't even know how many feet it goes up and down right there from the top oh. of where we were at down to the bottom where the t Yeah, that's what I was telling him. He was like, what about... 18's, t- or 18's pin. I was like, it's nowhere near it. And he was like, it's right there. I'm like, no. I was like, that drops off. Like, it's so far down, you can't even tell. Like, <coughs> all of that area where we're talking about is all raised up yeah. on both sides. You can't nice. see any of it. Cool. And it, where that is, because of what we're doing with hopefully Tournament Central and everything like that, literally, we'll be able to control all of the flow of spectators coming in. Yeah. Which is huge. And so now we will have to make a little bit more investments as far as having, you know, stakes in like either plastic or rope or something to keep people, you know what I mean, on this path. But other than that, you know, it'll be pretty simple, straightforward. Cool. Yeah. And I mean, the good thing about that is all that extra space. The place is, is freaking huge. I mean, when we say it's only eight, nine, eight thousand, whatever feet, it's the the space that we're playing on is ginormous. Oh yeah, and there's yeah. A, a lot of the space out there is not being utilized by the course, and that's why we have that big open hill that we can park a bunch of cars on. Yeah. Yep. So I'm so excited. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Everything that we were worried about has really kind of worked itself out so far, and and really handled itself. So it's been a it's been a real nice easy process so far. So knock on wood that keeps up. Yeah. Um. Where do, where do you guys, I mean, obviously we look at this new announcement we talked about with Chris about the disc, disc golf network and the paywall for live coverage. Um, and immediately you see pretty much even mix of people that are like, they're going to have to show me that the quality can be better before I'll pay anything for it. But then you've also got uh, that the people that are like, I'm probably not even going to be able to watch it, but I'll pay for it just to support it. Well, I mean, you're going to, it, it's kind of hand and foot there or I guess if that's even a thing, I don't even know if you could say it that way. Uh, I have no <laughs> yeah. idea. Anyway, and in foot, and there's some body in there. And yeah, yeah, a head. yeah. Anyway, those people who are saying that they don't want to pay the money unless they can see the quality's better. You know, the quality can't get better unless they're getting money to pay for that quality. I mean, it, it's a two way street there. You want better quality, maybe throw a little, you know, dollar or two their way to help support. And I'm sure that it's not going to be something astronomical. I'm sure it'll be. Probably not even something you would even bat an eye at. You know, 10, 15, yeah. 20 bucks. Well, and you get a 50% off discount with the PDJ membership, too, I'm pretty sure. So oh, yeah. I, see, I mean, who knows? Yeah. I'm sure that all that information will come out soon because the memorial well, is coming come out. out. It did. Oh, come it out. did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And you can get okay. it on uh, Roku and like Fire TV and all that stuff. It's like an app that you can download and you pay the subscription and you can get the first, you can get all of it. I think the final round will be available for, for free but the, or something like that. Oh, awesome, man. I did not yeah. know that. I'm going to have to get on the old Roku when I get home. Dr. Details is putting it into his Googleizer. Yeah. Googleize that. Put that in your Googleizer. Anything else, though, besides that? Well, yeah. Um, I was going to talk. I was going to talk a little bit about the new prototype. Uh oh. From Latitude 64, the Sapphire. Ooh. 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 Sapphire. Welcome so, back to the <coughs> Sapphire oh, Lounge. Me. This thing is pretty sweet. Been hearing a lot of talking about it going on on the interwebs over the last few days after it's released. And a lot of the team members are throwing them and releasing review videos. Uh, this is part of the easy-to-use lineup from Latitude 64. It's a 150 class. It is a distance driver, so it is stable. I was surprised how stable it is. Not that it's super stable, but... When you say easy to use, you say 150 class, you expect something like a breakout or a diamond or a jade or something like that. This has a ton of glide and a ton of, and a, not a ton, but some, a lot of stability, moderate stability. Um, I threw this thing pretty hard. My first couple throws with it, I was definitely hysering it out, trying to just give it room to stand up, and it did not flex as much as I thought it was going to. Hmm. And throwing flat, hard, I'm getting a nice S turn out of it. 
could easily, like in an open field, you could easily push 400 feet. Um, bye, Jay. Marcus threw this uh, yesterday up the hill next to his house, and he also threw a bunch of other discs, like uh, I forget what all he threw, but the sapphire went the farthest. You all hmm. right there, buddy? Okay. Um. <laughs> um, yeah, so the sapphire is really cool. I think a lot of people are going to get uh, a use out of this. I think Jay got a frog in his leg. <laughs> yeah, I had a back of my leg cramp bad. I was, like, oh, oh. I was wondering what was going it. on over there, man. He it bailed was, out yeah. quick. Oh, yeah. uh, that, that did not feel good. It's an old Sorry fo- about that. It's Jay an old jumped off the train. injury, folks. No, no, no. It's just leg cramps. I always had them for some reason or get them for some reason. You need to drink some old pickle juice, I was going to say, you need to get on some old water instead of some of this here coffee from Brian. Uh, but yeah, I saw Jared Neal threw this over 500. I think Dixon Jowers threw it over around 500. Uh, Jeff Casalina threw it around 500. So nice. a lot of the a lot of the big arms are getting really big distance out of this. Cool. But uh, there were some people today that were kind of throwing out that they thought that it was that that really throws the whole argument of or the whole uh, advertisement of it being part of the easy to use lineup out of the window. <laughs> And I don't feel like that's the case. I think people are expecting one thing, and it's not that. I, this is definitely a distance driver. Um, I would say that for me, and the IMAX, my my average is about 350, like consistent. Uh, I push up to 370 quite a bit. In good conditions on a good day, I get 400 out of my escape. So this, to me, flies like a longer, faster escape. It's got plenty of glide, so it will be less controllable in a wind and stuff like that. It's a <coughs> glide of 6, speed of 10. Um, but it's a really versatile disc. I think a lot of different uh, players of different skill levels and different uh, experience ranges are going to find a use out of this disc. You know, you, so. you, it could be a roller for some people. It could be a nice distance flex disc for some people. It could be, you know, many things to many people. A hyzer disc with more glide so you can get a little bit more penetration out of a hyzer shot. But this is a great disc, and I recommend that you go get it. They uh, The first run Opto Chameleon uh, uh, run first run of these sold out in minutes, but the stock uh, stamps are dropping. Um, Opto Chameleon Sapphire cool. the March fifth unlocked March, March 5th. 5th dynamicdisc.com. What else you got there? We all see a blue one. I yeah, like, I like blue. This one is coming right behind the Sapphire. This is the Sergeant from Dynamic Discs. Sergeant. Sergeant. Yep. And this thing is really stable distance driver, and I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's I want stable. You guys to pay attention. Because this one's dropping right after the Sapphire, and we'll come back and talk mm. about the Sergeant some more after that. But Boom. I would like to mention the prices. I found some more details. The Disc Golf Network. <laughs> Good deal. Well, because you, you said, <laughs> could you find some more details on this? Did I? I couldn't remember. Yeah. Uh, then you were like falling I'm down with a cramp. Just giving you a hard time, go. Uh, it Disc Golf Network is eight ninety nine, eight dollars and ninety nine cents a month. Or sixty four dollars and ninety nine cents per year. Mm, okay. Active PDJ members are offered a fifty percent, five zero percent discount, bringing that to four dollars and forty nine cents per month. Well, that's, yep. that's like I would those use commercials my PDGA discount for only pennies a day. You can feed your addiction to disc golf <laughs> for less than a <laughs> cup of coffee. Yeah, exactly, it's like less than a cup of coffee a month. You're sponsoring a struggling disc golf video. Yeah. Yeah, and hopefully out, with your sponsorship of less than a coffee cup. Get out there and support Disc Golf. We'll be able to people. make it. It might cost you five dollars so a month, struggling. but that's worth it to get improved disc golf coverage. It's an I obvious so. thing, man. Obviously, people are all about growing disc golf until you tell them that in order to do that, you're gonna have to spend a little bit of money. And then everybody hey, wants to pump the brakes. Yeah, yeah. And things cost money. We like things. Yeah. And people sure. wanna, you know, they're very hesitant. On a surface level, to separate themselves from their money, but they will buy stuff they like and they'll buy stuff that they believe in. And I think that on the believe in side, it's worth investing in for a few bucks, a few bucks a month, and you get to watch I all, that, all that live coverage. And it's bound to get way better than it's ever been. Yeah. So, but you know, we, we just got to keep the train moving. You know what I'm saying? Hop on that train, guys. We need you to help the train to keep going, locomotive. We are all about some homemade sound effects here. Yeah, my train horn was weak. Toot, toot. <laughs> toot. That sounds like Chase. All horn. right, yeah, Car yeah, horn. we all know. <laughs> Honda Fit. Meow, meow. That's right. 
Almost 200,000 miles. Guys, there's a lightning delay. Me, 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 me. <laughs> yeah. I just like to downplay it so nobody gets scared. Right. Yeah. Some people are afraid of storms. I mean, you guys didn't know that. You're a doctor. You should know that. They got phobias and stuff. Yeah. Some Helps people, me sleep. I like storms. I love storms, but. Quiet yeah. storm. Quiet storm. Unless it's a supercell storm, and then, then I'm like, yeah, man, better, better watch this one. Yeah. Yeah. Or Music City Open. Lightning watch. Yeah, well, yeah. Lightning alert. You get 30 guys standing in a parking lot staring at the sky in different directions. Mm-hmm. Looking at their watch. Surrounded by trees. Yeah. And a lot of metal. It's awesome. Anyway, anybody else got? Have anything? we worn out eardrums yet tonight? Everybody's eardrums. You guys still with us out there? Yeah, in the ether. Yeah, I'm still here. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Marcus? I don't know if you guys. Hey, can yeah, see Marcus. Marcus is here. He kind of just came in the room. He's off camera a little bit. Is there a camera today? Yeah, right, right here. here. Hey, buddy. Hope you all enjoying the show. Um, seems like I got a couple more discs to try. Yeah, Sapphire. Sergeant Sapphire Lounge. You threw both of these yesterday. Yeah, you threw four. Uh, occasionally, I get a good spin snap on a disc, and it travels a very far distance. Um, but yeah, that's um, definitely two of my favorite discs so far. New disc of 2020. The Sapphire, I threw it on a slight hyzer, uh, rolled up the hill, my little driving range in the backyard. <laughs> and I definitely tried too hard on the sergeant because I was giving good information and I didn't know uh, exactly how to pop it. But uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure at some point this year you I'll be using the hot, this. You got the sapphire yeah. up over that hill, though. It was a good flight. Yeah. I was yeah. really surprised. Yeah. And I didn't know that that disc was, uh, what's the weight on it? 157. So if you don't tell anybody it's 157, they're really going to throw it like a good disc, like a, a real traditional heavy go-for-it disc. And it's, hmm. it, it can totally change my mind. When you said 157, I was like, what? You could have told me that before. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's what we were just talking about. Like, I think everybody was expecting it to be super mm -hmm. flip, like Flip City, and it's not. And you can actually get a good exactly. long flight out of it. That's all I got. I think you could add. Studio Thanks, supervisor. <laughs> I think it could add 40, 50 you feet. You left us. We didn't know where you went. We went down, took a little mini break. I and got then scared. You were gone. I wanted to put the kid in the car so he would sleep. Ah, <laughs> the, yeah, the old car trick. You know, mm -hmm. Nice. Just, Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. We were worried about you. The host with the most. Thanks, Marcus. Yeah, bro. Everything, You're everything the best, you've, man. you've done yeah. to help us get all this fancy stuff. This is awesome. Yes, sir. Well, I think that's about it, guys. I don't I don't really have anything else burning a hole in my brain to no. get out. I'm good. Yeah. Music City. Music. Until next time. Music City. We love you. We love you. And peace. Deuces. Let the bass kick.